A familiarization trip around government departments, government and donor funding projects has caused outrage from some members of parliament to the state of some of the most vital institutions around the island. The visit, initiated by the Speaker of the New Legislative House of Assembly, Honourable Alhiva Levy, took in several government departments, including New High School. One of the members of Parliament that joined the trip is Commonwealth Member Honourable Terry Coe. According to Mr Coe, the trip was successful in identifying problem areas that need urgent attention. I've complained in the House a number of times and uh, you know the power corporation it's a real mess inside and uh, with the uh, old vehicles and wires and whatnot and also the the building itself uh, and office uh, where the workers work is substandard and outside the uh, fence there's all those old machineries and uh, drums of oil which also need to be taken away uh, you could be taking tourists up there to have a look at the place, but you couldn't do it now because it's in such a mess. And to me, I said to the minister, it would take you know just one or two days to clean it up. But uh, he said, oh, the environment are going to do it. But to me, the department should be doing it themselves. And the uh, high school, uh, a real disgrace uh, to us New Orleans. And uh, I think really, you know, the BCN should go up there and go around the departments and the toilets, etc., and see what it's like. Um, I, th I was a bit um, disappointed that the people didn't come, the ones on the trip didn't come, actually come around the high school. Uh, it was only Poco who came to the toilets with me and uh, agreed that they were a disgrace and that he's going to get them fixed up. So that's good, but it's the other areas as well, you know, concern in the industrial arts department, machinery not working. And when you look at the labs, the laboratories and that, there doesn't seem to be any um, equipment in that for practical, you know, work. And the hydroponics was pumping away there, no fluid in it and no plants in it, you know, just so it really is quite slack. And I told the principal, he, you know, he should be ashamed of what the school is like now. Mm. And he said, oh, there's no money. This is not a new trip as such. Um, this, the Public Expenditure Committee had did the same rounds with the departments previously before the budget a couple of years ago or, or last year. Um, were these issues not identified back then? No, because we didn't actually go to the you know and have a look around the departments we just went and spoke to the, uh, the, in, the in the office and just spoke to people about the the department's budget and i said to this last pc meeting i said to the chairman that uh, we should go around you know go and see these departments and see what really needs doing uh, we could help the departments by you know bringing this up in the house uh, you know if things need doing we should get it done but this is an ongoing song, and I mean, this trip was initiated by the Speaker of the House, not by the members of Parliament. It was raised in Parliament, but it took the Speaker of the House, the new Speaker of the House, to actually make a move. Yes, and I think he's done the right thing. It's good. It's, uh, as I say, it's disappointing that some other people, some of the members couldn't come, but I think that's natural because of other commitments. But uh, we're going around next Thursday to see some of the other departments and I hope that more members you know come around and I think we've got to spend a bit more time going around the department and and having a look of what is going on rather than just go there and make a try to make it a quick visit that's not going to achieve anything do you think anything will actually eventuate from this trip I mean you have um, you have raised these issues in in Parliament over the years in regards to the departments and what we need to upgrade or develop more in that area, but uh, nothing has changed. Do you think a new approach is, is what we need? Well, I, I hope so, because, the, you know, the, uh, the Minister of Education, uh, Poko Sepali, he said he would do, you know, get the toilets done. Now, it's up to him to do it and to, uh, with the help probably of the PTA and the principal, and uh, 
get that started. You can't do the whole lot because there's so much there to do. And the hall was a disgrace, you know, needs really re renovating right throughout. So I think um, if he can make a start up there and the other ministers of their departments, you know, get on and do the work instead of just talk, 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 no work, uh, no walking. Um, and it seems so common just to make an excuse all the time, excuse, excuse, excuse. And, uh, you know, that's we're, we're past that time. We should start working ourselves and get these things done. But we, I mean, if there is no money as... Um advised by the principal of New High School to, to um, take charge of the, uh, the issue, how can they do the work if there's no money to upgrade? Well, there is money in the budget, and that's why, I mean, it's up to the education department, the, the director, and uh, where that money is to do those jobs, because it is allocated in the budget, mm -hmm. and so that we, you know, we need to use what money we've got, but you know, we spent all this money going on the church buildings and uh, sports club renovations. Uh, there's nearly 240,000 there, plus the new government vehicles. They're going to cost, uh, you know, at least 100,000. That money should be we should be putting it into the education place, into the school. I mean, what's more important? It's our future leaders that are at the school, and here we're not teaching them, and they haven't got the proper facilities, no discipline. And uh, so, you know, that's where it needs to start. Otherwise, we, in the future, we're going to have no good leaders at all. Everyone will be just doing their own thing. The group also visited some of the funded projects around the island. They were good projects that had done, but it's been done by the Agriculture Department. And to me, it's a, it's a village project, and the village people should be doing it now, even though the handover is not till later on this year. But they should be there. They should have come along to the, why we were there, and you know, so we can speak to them. But it's at the moment, agriculture is spending all the money to clean those places and plant them. And uh, how are those people in the villages going to be able to cope spending the same money to clean that place up? I don't see it's practical. And the sale of you know probably Nunu to the Nunu factory could take place. The director said but uh, how much money are they going to re actually receive for it, for their product? And the veggie garden had a whole lot of veggies in it, but they were all, um, you know, worms and bugs all over them. So it, it hasn't been replanted. I mean, they should have been all pulled out and new stock being planted. It hasn't been done. And I don't think they've got the manpower to do it just with the agriculture people. They need the village people to help. Mm. The second phase of the initiative is for the MPs to visit the southern part of the island that will include the new public service building next week. Last weekend, a campaign on energy efficient light bulbs was launched at Falefano as government continued to improve the island's renewable dependence. The campaign that is funded by the European Union project REAP EDF10 provided 5,000 compact fluorescent light bulbs for all occupied houses on the island as well as businesses and government departments. According to Economic Planning, Development and Statistics Unit representatives, there are 400 domestic households registered to receive six light bulbs each, but businesses and government departments will have a different distribution allocation depending on the assessment data made available. An advisory from the department is for customers to collect their light bulbs from the new public service building. Some of the projects that has been funded by the European Union include the solar panels already installed at Newey Hospital, Newey High School and the Newey Power Station. There is an expectation that more panels will be installed at the airport and other government areas. The representative said that the solar and gas project is likely to return as well, but it will not be as expensive as the initial project funded under the European Development Funds. Alofi North Ladies Club continued to impress visitors yesterday morning as displays of handcrafts and creative designs down the community hall as the ladies gear up for the village annual show day. 
Member of Parliament and one of the group's main supporters, Mrs. Vaiinga Tukri Tonga, said not many displays were available this year, but that also could also be because the group decided not to judge the handcrafts, rather just a display for the ladies. She said there could be some changes in the future, but there also need to be a cooperation to increase the development of cultural and traditional products on the island. Even though not much was seen compared to previous years, the ladies, who are known for the Sivaivai, still managed to outdo most of the villages in designs and originality. The Alofi, show, Alofi North Show Day is taking place this coming Saturday at the Niue High School grounds. The women of Alofi North would like to invite everyone to their show day. Niue Rugby Sevens has qualified for the $40,000 Gold Coast International Sevens Tournament as part of the IRB circuit. And another chance to qualify for the Wellington League will take place next month in Samoa. Secretary General for Niue Rugby Union, Dalton Tangalangi, said the union is happy to join the rest of the international teams in the Gold Coast tournament after qualifying with Papua New Guinea at the recent South Pacific Games in New Caledonia. The island's representative team, who decided to throw the New Caledonia game to reach the semi-finals, changed strategies. Unfortunately, they were defeated by Papua New Guinea in one of the semi-finals. The finals was played by Fiji and Samoa, with Samoa topping the game second to Fiji, third Papua New Guinea and Niue came th fourth. One of the highlights for supporters of rugby is for Niue team to make the Wellington Sevens tournament and Niue will have a chance to prove themselves worthy of the circuit next month when they take on some of the powerhouses at the Oceania Sevens in Apia. Mr Tangalangi said most of the players are from New Zealand because of their experiences and exposure but a couple from the island will be selected to join the main team. That decision is yet to finalise. A 15-a-side team with the majority selection proposed from the local-based players is also on the agenda for this year. That will be taking place in Papua New Guinea. That is for the Faru Oceania Cup that was won by Niue in 2008. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, the first tentative program for Niue's 37th Constitution program has been released by the Department of Community Affairs. The program, which is to start on the 8th of October, is proposed to take up most of the month with a full agenda starting with the Waka events, with the main events planned for the 19th, with the flag racing ceremony, followed by the National Show Day on the 20th. And for those of you who are wishing for extra public holidays, it looks like those are still unchangeable and most likely to stay with just the flag racing day and show days as public holidays. Concerns over the years has always been with the flag raising day where most people prefer to stay away from the ceremonious event and government is hoping more people will join in this year's program. Another change for this year's events in the, is the island cricket that will see teams from New Zealand New Wayans arrive to take on the locals. The cricket games are rumoured to be the most popular event during the Constitution uh, celebrations. We'll bring you more on this story in our news bulletin in the future. That's our news bulletin for tonight, but make sure you're all invited to the Alofi North Show Day that is going to be happening this coming Saturday at Newey High School grounds. Good evening.